Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to tackle a topic that often trips up candidates preparing for cybersecurity certification exams, digital signatures. We'll talk about the purpose and use of digital signatures and the technology behind them. By the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know to successfully answer exam questions about digital signatures. You're already familiar with traditional signatures. You've used a pen to sign credit card receipts, contracts, and other documents on a regular basis. Before we dive into digital signatures, let's think about those paper signatures a little bit. Why do we sign documents? Well, we do it for a couple of reasons. First, we use our signature as a form of authentication. When we sign a receipt or other document, the person receiving that document can compare our signature to a record that they have on file to confirm that we are who we claim to be. In the world of cybersecurity, we call that authentication, proving our identity to someone else. Second, we sign documents to create a permanent record of our agreement to that document. When we sign a contract or other paper record and give it to someone else, they can then use that document to later prove to a third party that we actually signed the document and agreed to its terms. In the world of cybersecurity, we call that non-repudiation, allowing someone else to prove that we agreed to a document. Digital signatures bring the concept of a traditional signature to the electronic world. Now, we can't whip out a pen and sign an email message or a Word document, so we need some other way to be able to carry out that process. Digital signatures take advantage of cryptography to replace the pen and ink process used by those traditional signatures. And digital signatures have the same benefits as traditional signatures. They may be used as a form of authentication, proving the identity of the signer to a third party, and they also provide non-repudiation. They're created in a way that the person receiving a digitally signed document can prove to a third party, such as a court, that the person who created the digital signature really signed the document. In fact, a digital signature is much more difficult to forge than a pen and ink signature, allowing digital signatures to provide much stronger authentication and non-repudiation than traditional signatures. Digital signatures also have a third benefit that goes beyond the benefits of traditional signatures. In addition to providing authentication and non-repudiation, digital signatures also provide assurance of the integrity of a message. When someone verifies a digital signature, they not only get the assurance that the sender actually applied that signature, but they can also be certain that the message wasn't tampered with after the person signed it. So those are the benefits of digital signatures. Let's move on and talk first about how we create digital signatures, and then how someone who receives a digitally signed document can verify that signature. And before we can do that, we need to talk about two foundational technologies, cryptographic hashes and asymmetric cryptography. These two technologies are the building blocks that make digital signatures possible. Hashes are a way of reducing the content of a file down to a very short value that represents the contents of the document. Hash functions take files of any size and transform them into a fixed length output value. We call that value the message digest. Here's an example of how that works. I took the text of John F. Kennedy's famous speech setting a goal of putting a person on the moon and ran it through a hash function called the secure hash algorithm. You can see the speech in the top box here, and then below it you can see the hash value generated from the text of the speech. Now I'm going to make a small change to the text of this speech. All I'm going to do is delete one comma. When I do that, I want you to watch the hash value beneath the text and see how it changes. Here we go. That hash value changed completely. This is actually one of the main properties of a hash function. There's no such thing as a near miss. If two documents are even slightly different, the hash values will be completely different. If two documents have the same exact hash value, you know that those documents are identical. But if they have different hash values, you just know that they're different. You don't know how different they actually are. Hash functions are also what we call one-way functions. 
you can't take a hash value and figure out what text was used to generate that hash value. So that's one of the two important technologies. Hash functions create a digital summary of a message known as the message digest. Let's put that topic aside for a moment and talk about the second important technology, asymmetric encryption. Now, I'm not going to go into the mathematical details of asymmetric encryption in this video. I actually covered that in an earlier CERT Mike Explains video, and I encourage you to go back and watch that one if you haven't already. I just want to give you a quick reminder of what you'll need to know to understand how digital signatures work. Cryptographic algorithms rely upon keys to provide security. Now, these keys are just very long strings of data that can be represented in text form like you see here. They can also be stored in binary form, but this is a format that's easy for us to see on the screen. When we use asymmetric cryptography, each user has two keys, a public key and a private key. Now, that public key is freely shared with anyone in the world. There's nothing secret about it, and it's fine to give it away to anyone. There's nothing bad that someone can do to you just because they have your public key. The private key, on the other hand, is kept secret. You can think of that private key as the password to your cryptographic algorithm, and you should protect it just like you would protect a password. If someone gains access to your private key, they can read your private data and impersonate you. Now that's no good. Before I explain how we put these two technologies together to create digital signatures, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. All right, let's now dive into how we can combine cryptographic hash functions and asymmetric cryptography to create a digital signature. Let's say that I have an email message that I would like to send to my friend Susan, and I'd like to send it with a digital signature. The first thing I do is choose a cryptographic hash function and use that hash function to create a message digest for the email. As we discussed earlier, this message digest is a unique value that represents the content of the message in a compact form. Next, I take my private key and use it to encrypt the message digest. That encrypted message digest is the digital signature. I created it with my private key, so I am the only person in the world who could possibly have created that digital signature. I then attach the digital signature to my email message and send it on its way to Susan. Now, when she receives the message, Susan can see the contents of the message and also the digital signature that's attached to it. Susan can verify my digital signature by reversing the process that I followed. She takes the digital signature and decrypts it using my public key. That gives her the message digest that I encrypted. Next, she takes the text of the message and runs it through the same hash function that I used to get her own copy of the message digest. Then she compares the two values. If they match, the digital signature is verified, and Susan can be confident that the message is authentic, meaning that it really came from me, and that it has integrity, meaning that the message Susan received is identical to the message that I sent. If the two hash values don't match, then Susan knows that something went wrong. Now, she can't be sure exactly what went wrong, but she knows not to trust the message. Let's talk about a couple of possibilities of what might have happened. If someone tampered with a message, that would change the value of the message digest that Susan herself computed, and it wouldn't match the message digest in my digital signature. If someone forged the digital signature, then they would not have had access to my private key, and they would have had to use some other key to encrypt the message digest. When Susan decrypted the digital signature with my key, it wouldn't decrypt properly, and the message digest she extracted from the digital signature wouldn't match the message digest that Susan computed herself. 
Now it's important to remember here that if the digital signature doesn't verify, Susan can't tell exactly what went wrong. The message could have been tampered with, or the digital signature might have been forged. This might have been as simple as someone removing a comma like I did earlier, or it could be a completely fraudulent message. Susan just needs to know not to trust the message if the signature doesn't verify. Susan can also use this digital signature for non-repudiation. If I later claim to someone else that I didn't send the message, Susan can give that person the digitally signed copy and let them verify my digital signature themselves. When they verify that signature with my public key, they know that I actually created the signature for that message. Digital signatures are a topic that confuses many people when they're preparing for a cybersecurity exam. I hope this video helped you understand the topic better. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.